I'm here with senior ballistician Jaden Quinlan, and we're talking about our new patented drag variability reduction technology. Jaden, this is an incredibly complex and deep concept. How long have you guys been testing this DVRT, and how long did it take you to bring it to the forefront? Sure, great question. Well, drag variability itself is, is not a new concept or phenomenon in ballistics, um, in the field of ballistics. It's been known about for a long time, but it really hasn't been a, a point of concentration until recently. And, and that's because of the advances we've seen in, in long distance shooting and the capabilities. We're starting to expose the smallest little variations that exist in, in all aspects of, of long distance shooting. Now, how long have we specifically been looking at this problem and what resulted in the solution of DVRT? Nearly a decade at this point. Wow. Um, we, we, we purchased our Doppler radar in 2014. We're sitting here today in, in 2024. Um, so you got a decade there that we've been testing with the Doppler, but the, the drag variability concentration really started around 2016 or 2017. So we've been measuring bullet drag with the Doppler radar for the last 10 years, um, hundreds of thousands of shots at this point. And in 2016 or 2017, that time frame correlates to um, the discovery of heat shield tip prior to that, right, from 2014 to 2016. And then the implementation and further testing of, of the heat shield tipped bullets, the ELD match, the ELD X of that era, um, is where we started to, to see the, the variability piece come into question. So we were, we were testing our bullets, we were testing competitor bullets, uh, and we were starting to see that there's a wide span of drag variability performance out there. And in the popular shooting culture or information that's commonly available to the shooter, there's not a lot of information about drag variability itself. It's a concept that's understood by, by some, but many people may have never heard of it. They've never known that it's something to worry about or to make a judgment on. You know, I'm going to select this over this because it's better in that metric. So 2016, 2017, we really started diving into trying to understand why did this bullet have better drag variability than this other bullet did? Because if you can reduce the drag variability, you're going to increase your hit probabilities on long range uh, shots. You're going, to, you're going to shoot smaller groups at distance. And so that 2016 to 2017 timeframe was really kind of digging into what might influence this from the bullet's perspective, because it, it, it is a contributing factor to the total drag variability you have. Um, the discovery of the ratio of the, of the Miplat shape and diameter to the bullet's diameter really started to come together in around 2018, uh, late 2017 to 2018. And uh, this technology, the DVRT technology, has been around for a while. Um, once we found it, we implemented it immediately. Uh, the A-tip bullets were launched in 2019. They had this feature to them. Um, you can go back and, and look at some of those from that time. And then ELD Match and ELDX and anything that had a heat shield tip in that era, which was, which was still those two, immediately received that kind of update, that performance update. And then any bullets that came after that that used the heat shield tip, the, you know, the CX bullets um, and the ELD VTs, they all have it as well. And we didn't, we didn't talk about it initially because we were, we were in the process on a patent. Mm. And we had searched, you know, all the literature that we could get our hands on to see you know, we, we kind of stand on the forefathers of who came before us in ballistics, right? And, and so a lot of times you kind of get the mindset of like, it's already been done, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Um, but this wasn't one of those cases. We searched everywhere that we could to see if this was understood anywhere or implemented anywhere or discussed. And it, it wasn't that we could find. And that's mainly because most of the industry, most of projectile manufacturers or ammo manufacturers have really concentrated on just kind of the net or the, the, the total drag, right? Or you think of it from a BC perspective. We want a high BC number, but rarely do you hear the discussion about consistency tied to that. We're kind of just in the pursuit of those, those raw horsepower numbers, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that, that leads to a lot of the reason why you didn't see this discovered before is because of that concentration on just the numbers of, of the, the average and not the consistency of it or the variability of it. And uh, so, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a really interesting road. I mean, for a decade now, uh, this thing has totally come to fruition, and now we're you know, talking about it openly. Um, although the customer's been benefiting from it for many years at this point, now they can understand why, uh, which, is, which is really neat. 
Awesome. Well, job well done, even though it took 10 years. Oh, thank you. <laughs> For more information on drag variability reduction technology, check out episode number 127 of the Hornady podcast or our website, hornady.com.